What's up guys? Today we're gonna get some work done on CRX, shifting my focus back here, see if I can get it set up for the last two events of the year. Transmission on this car was feeling a little rough, really, really notchy. It just did not feel crisp at all going into any gears. I have a, tr a spare transmission on a B20 swap. Let me pull that out, get that disassembled really quick. And here's that transmission after pulling it off. Had some sort of three puck clutch, really worn down. Gonna need a new clutch kit if I gonna try to use this. This motor was purchased in a part out car. Let me see if I have an old picture. If I do, I'm gonna throw it up here so you guys take a look at it. Really rough, car didn't have a battery. I was able to do a, a cold compression test by bringing my battery. And the compression seemed to check out at the house. Once I had it home, I was able to mess around a little more, get it started, warm it up completely, and the compression actually checked out pretty good. It was like 175, 180 all the way across. He had told me it had an S80. Well, he just had a Type R transmission, and I was skeptical. There really isn't any markings on these transmissions. You can see the S80, but an S80 could also be just like an LS transmission. But once I got it home, got started, started to disassemble it, Obviously, I showed you a little earlier. You can see that it is an LSD transmission. So this is Type R transmission. Uh, how well it shifts, goes into gear, grinds, pop outs. That's left to be seen. The cars, I've never driven it. We're gonna try it anyways. Transmission swaps really aren't too difficult. For me, I can usually pull one within an hour, get the other one back up within another hour or two, just depending on my motivation level. But, I think I'm gonna order a new clutch and continue working on getting the transmission dropped. Kind of update you along the way and see how this transmission works out on there. So I got the transmission off. My dumb ass was struggling with it and that's because I had forgotten to remove the half shaft. So when I was pulling it, of course, that's still stuck into the driver's side. But I was able to kick it and I just kind of slid it off far enough to fall to the ground. So I put all the towels there. I didn't want to damage the casing or even just the concrete itself. I mentioned earlier that I'm gonna replace the clutch. Now this is a competition clutch 1.5. I'm gonna inspect it first. I figured I've only used this for the track. I doubt it has more than like four or 5,000 miles on it. I know it's all hard miles. I broke it in with like 500 before I started tracking it. But I just wanna, and I'm gonna inspect it and see if I really need to replace it. Maybe I can just keep using it. Because this transmission is a 9293. It's a large spline, so it'll work with that hydro transmission. The clutch should fit perfectly fine also. Now in looking at it, let's take a look. There still seems to be, let me see if I can focus on the clutch itself. Significant life on these pads. It doesn't really look too torn up. You can definitely see the definition from one pad to the other. I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse this. I don't see any reason to buy a new one. Let's double check. We have, this is that other transmission. Yeah. So that one fits on here. 
perfectly. Shouldn't have any issues getting that mounted on. So now we just need to go ahead and re-torque this back on. I'll realign it and we'll get this transmission thrown on. You know, like that and you need some of your own time. Yeah. Don't you agree? Yeah. Unless it's just that she worked all weekend. Yeah. And, and so, the night shift. Yeah, and I worked the day. Uh -huh. And then, so I barely saw her. I saw her on Sunday. And then I had to go to sleep and go back to work. So I got this transmission ready, swapped out the cable driven speedometer sensor. Went ahead and pulled off the fork. I re-lubricated both where the throwout bearing goes, also the pivot area for that little ball. You're supposed to do that. Also clean them a little bit. I want it sliding as smoothly as possible. I'm not gonna worry about cleaning the interior of this. I would if the car was super mint, but once I get it on, I would like to clean the whole engine bay. It has never been cleaned. It could really use it. Maybe just clean it up entirely before the next event, especially since it's been sitting for the last couple of months. So we just pressure wash everything all together, make the outside look nice and pretty. easier ones to get put on. Made it a lot easier. Chris was outside. He's working on his CRX right now. Didn't want to bug him, but I figured I'd call him in and have him help me with the jack, and that made it so much easier. He was able to lift it, and it went on on the first try. Sometimes lining that input shaft with the clutch itself can be tricky, especially if you're doing it by yourself. That's why I always tend to use a jack to help lift it, the weight of it. These transmissions are heavy. They're like 60, I think 60, 70 pounds alone. So it made it a lot easier. Now I just gotta go through, get everything bolted back up, see if we can get this thing ready shortly. To mount the transmission, I have in here, I cleaned it up, put it away. This is the innovative transmission mount for EF with hydro. And I also have the actuator. I cleaned it up. I got this off of another parts car about two years ago and have just been saving it for a situation like this. I don't know if I have, it looks like I have some of the hardware in here. I'm gonna throw those on. Looks like those mount here. The rest I'll figure out. Looks like they use some of the bolts on the transmission itself. Shouldn't be too difficult to get that mounted up. I'm just gonna work on finishing, getting the rest bolted up. I brought the mount out so I could get the transmission on really quickly, and then we just keep moving forward. One thing I forgot to do, unfortunately, this is off of an Integra T-bar. The bolts that go through here are much larger that bolt up to the transmission. It's a bigger diameter bolt on a DA T-bar, these holes are too small. This is the one I was supposed to swap out. It fits now. I think I might have to, might have to pull the transmission off. I don't know if I'll be able to get it removed any other way. I'm gonna try, I got it disconnected from the mount. Um, unfortunately, I might have to backtrack a little bit. Let's check that out. Okay, so I had to backtrack. I had to just pull it down. Still have the original T-bar on there. That's what I was talking about. Like, this is the bolt that fits on the hydraulic transmission. And you can see that this one is too small. That other T-bar I have was the one that came with a different transmission that I had. Someone had already drilled out the hole. So I don't think I'm gonna remove it. I think I'm just gonna get my drill bit out and open these up a little bit. That way I don't have to pull it off completely. And that went ahead and worked after just drilling a little bit. 
You can now fit these larger diameter bolts completely through it and bolt it up to that hydraulic transmission. All right, let's get this thing back on again. I got that innovative actuator on. Chris is sitting in the driver's seat. The only thing I don't like is how the clutch cable mounts. I think a lot of people actually run it along the front. I'm just a little more cautious of the heat um, on the cable itself. I might do something and try run it directly over the engine. Go ahead and step on it a few times, Chris. You can see how it works. The innovative one mounts a little differently than the Hasport. Chris and I were talking on his car, his Hasport mounts over on this side. Cable's more in the original position. Um, this one mounts here. I may try it for this event. I may ditch this setup eventually and go with Hasport. We'll see. We're just gonna keep moving forward, see how this feels and see how the clutch feels with the cable once I get some fluid in it. So skip forward, transmission's on. I just took it for a ride around the block. Feels good, you know, I've never used an actuator before. That actuator was on a parts car that I got. Same with the mount setup. Feels solid, um, you know, it still feels like a cable transmission, hence we're using the cable. I don't know if it's supposed to feel much different, but feels the same on the pedal pressure. And I'm using the, the Competition Clutch 1.5. It's a little stiff. When Chris was in it the other day, pushing on the pedal. He, for him, it was stiff. He wasn't used to it. I'm used to the pressure that is required to push the pedal down. So it feels fine. Just had to adjust the cable after I drove it, tighten it up a little bit more. The only thing I don't like, I don't like how close it sits to the header here. There's probably like three quarters inch of space. I don't know if that's gonna create problems with heat or heating it up. It's that piece under there, it's a little metal cylinder and then the rubber. I'd hate for it to kind of melt it a little bit. I guess we're gonna find out and see, if, see what happens. One thing I just did really quick, you know, I was running the clutch cable across here, across the top of the distributor. I don't really know which way it's supposed to go. This way seems to be okay. I just put a couple of cable ties. Left it loose, you don't want it tight. You don't want it holding the cable in place. It needs to be able to stretch and move a little bit. But this direction seems, I don't know, just seems a little better. I'm not sure if this is how it's supposed to be. Granted, I could just swap it around really quick if I need to. The only reason I didn't like the other way, is it was getting caught up on my throttle cable. I'd like to get a smaller throttle cable, like I believe the 88 SI. Let me see, I think this car has a really short one. This is the 88 Y49, it does. See how this one comes out, runs straight there. It doesn't run around the master cylinder. This is an 88 uh, CRX SI also. This one, camera just died on me, but this one also is an 88 SI, but it's far from stock, so I don't know when that was changed. You know, some of them, I think, do have a longer throttle cable. I don't know, I'm gonna see if I can find one that's smaller, that way we can just run it right between the master cylinder and the intake manifold, and just keep it off of the top of the strut bar. But for now, I think it's ready to go. It doesn't seem like there's anything else I really need to do. What I wanna do, I wanna clean this engine bay. I've never cleaned it, ever in my time of owning the car. I think I could definitely use it. There's a lot of just built up dirt, dust everywhere. I'll try to clean it up as best of my ability. I'll get you a little after footage of that and we'll see how it looks. One thing I did right now that I really like is you can adjust this little rod right here which pushes on the fork. That seems to alleviate you having to thread this all the way down. It still leaves you a little bit more room. I did that just so the engagement was quicker also. Once I had the, I put the cable back on and then spun this out with my hand and then tightened the lock nut. It seemed to alleviate some of the extra room needed to twist the cable nut all the way down. I like that. I don't know how the Hasport one is. Chris, on his CRX, he has a Hasport one and it mounts over Mounts over here, he was explaining it to me and it has a different arm which pulls instead of this one pushing. I don't know if that's a better alternative. I'd like to try that one too someday, but we're gonna rock and roll this one for now.
One thing also I'd been meaning to do was install these. These are three inch PCI side skirts. These were donated to me by a good friend, his name's Alex. He's a guy that professionally detailed and ceramic coated my Type R and Y49. Thanks again, man. I'll definitely put these to good use. He ended up going with four inch on his car. I think he just wanted to upgrade. One he had dinged up at the track. This one's a little, it's a little bent out here. A little battle damage there, but perfectly fine for this car. Last thing I was doing, I was able to squeeze in for today. Just wanted to pull out some of the remaining interior that was in this car. Not really for weight, it really doesn't do anything, but just to kind of complete the look of being a gutted car, maybe door panels will eventually be next, create some or buy some door cards. And I want to figure out what to do with the sunroof. It's never been functional. Motor's probably burnt out. I'd like to remove it because I know it weighs a pretty, pretty good amount. And then uh, maybe put like a piece of Lexan and maybe some sort of L brackets to mount it. I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but I'll save that for another day. Just make that a project one of these days completely. But thanks for tagging along today, guys. Hope you enjoyed getting a little bit of work done on Rune 49. Excited to drive it, see how it does at the next track event. Right there. More? Push it in a little bit more. That's good. Right there? Yeah, hold it right there. Let me see if I can. I think I got it. I think I got it. Yeah? Were you grabbing one of the long. Or just hold. Actually, jack it up on the left. There you go. That's good. Yeah. I think that should be good. Okay. Cool, dude.